All right, demoing the dynamic timing file. The debug blinks are set up for debugging the file right now. I'm not sure yet whether I'll enable a conventional post radar or not. Anyway, so it's going to start here. In this file, we're starting on 3.9.3. So it failed that time. There's 3.9.2. Now, it actually succeeded on 3.9.2, but that's a little high for this console. I'm glad it did that so I can demonstrate this. So when that light came on bright like that, that means it's now locked into 392. So it's always going to use 392. It's not going to decrease anymore. Now we're going to try to boot again. Hopefully we can uh, demonstrate this. So it's going to try to glitch. That was one fail. There's two fails. So you can see now it unlocked. It went down to 391. And there, we got success on 3.9.1. Now we'll just boot it again. I think 3.9.1 is low enough to boot this console, so we'll, we'll see. And yeah, there we go. So you can see this timing file found the optimal uh, timing for the console, and it's locked into it after only a few boot attempts. And now it will instant boot every time. So this is a essentially an automatically tuning timing. The one for this console is is uh, made there, but I'm going to probably have a few of them that each have their own range of values they search through. The idea being you can put one or two of those files on and brute force into Zell if you need to, or if you just don't want to adjust the files because remember on the Ace when we're using a crystal, uh, the timing file per chip will vary a bit. So if you just don't want to search, such a dynamic timing will work. That's all for now, and uh, hope you enjoyed.